Knit for Brains. Happy 2023. Oh my gosh, I feel like it's been forever since I've been on. You know, the holidays can make things a little bit wonky and crazy. Uh, and then on top of it, of course, you get visitors, you've got guests coming in. At one point, I had five people sleeping in our three bedroom, four bedroom house, people on the couches. It was kind of crazy. And you know, you know, guests start to smell like fish after about two to three days. Um, the one guest that we have left has been here since the 22nd, but he's an absolute love. Um, he does the dishes every morning, puts breakfast -led dishes out. Uh, if you want to borrow him, let me know. He's actually going back to France soon, but he has been an absolute dream. Anyways, um, I'm totally remiss, and I'm really sorry with the videos. I have had that nasty, cold, respiratory thing where you just cough and cough, and I had literally, I had no voice, none for about three weeks, and I have had this cold and crud thing since Thanksgiving, and this is uh, January 9th. So, it's been going on for a long time. I pray, I hope you stay healthy and you don't get anything like this. I did want to follow up. Um, I did a video on my, uh, I did the Whoopa Tena Cal. I'll include the link here so you guys can take a look at it when I thought about the pattern. I love the pattern, as I usually do with any of Tenna's things. Um, but I wanted to show you in this particular video <clears throat> about, I needed to find this particular size hook. It's a size K, 10 and a half millimeter, which believe it or not was really difficult. This is apparently not a standard size. It was not in my Etimo crochet hit kit, which I love. I pretty much use this for everything. It was not a size that I found in here. Um, and it was difficult to find. Uh, because some people say, well, it's close, but it's not exact. I needed something that was exact. So I was, I wanted to review on these because I did, based on the recommendation of one of our subscribers from last year, recommended that you um, go ahead and try these hooks. So I did try them. I got two of the sets, I believe. Really liked them, but I did the whole entire sweater in this particular hook. So I wanted to review this hook. This is a hard size to find. Um, it's a little bit of a fatter tip, okay? What I really liked about it, I'm gonna show you here in a second, I really like how this tip is so sharp because as I had double-stranded this yarn here, it was very, very easy to get in there without splitting the strands. And it also has a really nice um, sharp insert in here so it's easy to grab those yarns. When you look at a hook, you know, you think, okay, it's gonna be fine. Um, but then when you start really using it, then you start really paying attention to the little nuances that make things easy or difficult. So for instance, this is just a basic hook that you get on your Amazon. Very basic, couple bucks, right? Look at the tips. Okay, so look at this part here and then look at this part here. Look at them closely. Do you see how one, this one's a lot rounder. This one here is a lot more round at the top than this one here. This is not going to be as easy for you to go into your yarn without splitting your yarn, especially if you're using like a bulky yarn or something that maybe is a looser um, fiber, right? Um, a couple strands and things like that, it might be a little bit more difficult for you. This one I really, really found the top here to be very, very useful. The other part that was really helpful is notice here on the inside of this particular hook how it's not very deep, it's kind of shallow in here, right? Um, and it's a little bit more rounded as opposed to this one here. See how it's very pointed and then it's very sharp inside? This is really, really good to be able to get in to some of those stitches. So these two tips right here should give you a really good idea of the difference in the quality. This one I think I paid probably maybe 10 bucks or something for, not crazy. So it's these little nuances that you will find. This is where you deal with your quality and your quantity. This is very cheap. It does have the padded, you know, so it's easy to grip. This one here has the little bit of the rubber, so it's easier to hold on to depending whether you hold it like a pencil or whether you hold it like a knife. It's up to you. It's got some really nice grip here on the side, just easier to hold. And then it's got the, uh, the size of the hook is embossed down here at the bottom. This is also important. If you look at this one here, it's been totally worn off. 
right? And if you're using your hook, it's going to get worn off, if it's, even if it's just like a little emboss or a little bit of a paint. So you want to be careful of little tiny things like that um, that will make or break, I think, um, your hook experience, your hooking experience. So I wanted to show you, I'm going to do a little demo here on this particular hook. This is the Prim, and this is a size K, 10.5 millimeter number six, I think is what it's called. But the, but the millimeter size is really what you're looking for. I originally thought I had the right size, um, but it was what I had was a six millimeter, not the 10.5. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this works um, and just give you a little idea, but hold on, please. Okay, so as you can see, I'm doing just some simple crochet chains here, and this is double stranded. And just watch how easy it is to pick up both strands and bring them through into this is what really sold me on this particular hook. How it's very easy to pull through. Now, I'm going to just show you, I'm going to go into the second hook or second chain rather from the hook. I'm going to go into the back loop pull through and then pull through again just to kind of give you an idea of what now that actually did even um, grab a little bit of the fiber now I'm going to do a half double crochet and pull all the way through but as you can see I've got double strands pulling it all the way through the hook I'll do that one again and it's really easy, even on that first row, which can typically be the difficult row because you are getting your uh, gauge set. Um, it can be really difficult and it just pulls through very, very easily. So I was really impressed with this particular hook. Another thing that I found interesting, and I think I'll have to do a video on this, is what the difference is between the letters and the numbers and what it all means and so forth. I had a really hard time finding this particular size hook. Uh, it wasn't in any kit, so it's not a standard size. It wasn't in any standard the kits that I had. Um, and even to find it as an individual hook was really difficult, believe it or not. And this was the only one that I found that was this particular size. So they would say that maybe it's like a size J or the millimeters would be like a half off or something like that. Or instead of a size six, it would be a size five or something like that. And because I was doing a ribbing and a different size hook, I really needed this one to be specific and exact. And for heaven's sakes, if I'm asking for something, can you not just give me what I'm looking for? Okay, so this is the, uh, I'm using the prim hook and you can see the stitches are very easy, right? I double stranded this yarn. I'll go through and I'll give one more run through. So in this particular pattern of tennis, uh, what you do is you go into, so there's, if you didn't know it, there's actually three loops, right? So if you're looking at your stitch here, from basically from closest to you to farthest, you've got your front loop, which is gonna be this one. You got your back loop, which is the one in the back, so the farthest one from you. And then you've got your secret little third loop, which is this guy back here. So in this particular pattern that I was calling for, you're actually going into this secret back loop right in here. And I'm going to show you how cool this is as I finish. So you go around. Actually, I think you just did a single. You go into that back loop and then you crochet all the way through. And we're going to do it again. You're going to go into that third loop. It's not the back loop. I'm mistaken there. It's actually called the third loop. All right, and it can be a little tricky to find in the beginning, but once then you know what you're looking for, it's really easy to find. So again, it is behind, you got your first loop, which or your front loop, which is the one closest to you if you're looking at your uh, stitches. Then you've got your back loop, which is the one farthest from you, and then you have your third loop, which is the one in the back, okay? And I'll show you here in a second how this works and why it's sort of like, I think it's like kind of the big secret that everybody knows about. Um, but if you're looking for a crochet pattern or to do something crochet, but you don't really want it to look crochet, you want it to the stitches to be a little bit tighter 
and maybe looks a little bit more like knit, then this is a stitch for you. You see that? So you see by going into that um, third loop, you're actually getting this really cool ridging along here, bringing those stitches forward. And then on the back side, then you're gonna go into the back loop on the next um, round. And then you're really gonna be able to see how it all comes together. So as long as you understand how the front loop, the back loop, and the third loop work in tandem, right? Because it typically is sort of a, mm, you see the at least the back loop and the third loop come together quite often in patterns. Uh, as long as you understand how they work and where they land, I think I missed a little bit there, there it is, uh, you're gonna really, I think you're really gonna love this stitch. And it looks way more complicated and way more professional than it really truly is. It's actually very simple uh, once you get the hang of it. All right, so as you can see, this is the outside of your work. You can see how that little ridge is coming along here. This is going to be the inside of your work. And let me show you what this looks like in the big world, right? Okay, so as that stitch grows, this is what it looks like um, using that third loop, okay? And then if I were to flip it inside like this, this is how it looks on the inside. So just, right? But it does have this really cool knitting kind of ribbing look to it. Now, this, coming back to this hook that I absolutely love, it really was the right tool for the job in that I was able to very easily go into all of these stitches, do exactly what I need. Now this one here, I'm gonna go into this third stitch right here, um, and this pointed head, in my opinion, was really the kicker to, um, to make this pattern so easy to do. So we're gonna find that third hole right there, the third loop coming through, coming through, and you can start to see how it's bringing that whole entire stitch forward. Here we go. Okay. So see there how it's bringing that whole stitch forward, okay? Because what you're doing is you're, you're grabbing into the back here and you're kind of bringing those stitches forward. That is the stitch. This is the amazing prim hook that I used and found it absolutely loved. Okay, so once again, this is my review of the prim crochet hook. This happens to be a size K. 10 and a half millimeters. I do have a couple of these sets. I'm gonna use these a lot more. Um, another thing that's really nice is it's all one piece, okay? So sometimes with hooks like this, where you've got the aluminum and then you've got the gripping part here, sometimes your yarn can get caught on this. This is just a very cheapy, inexpensive hook that I found on Amazon um, that is fine, but once you really start getting into your craft, my husband always says, right tools for the right job. This, having some really good crochet hooks, is your right tool for the right job. Um, this one here, yarn can get hooked on and can get a little bit and split, okay? Depending if you're working with really thick yarns or something like that. This being all one piece is very easy. It's not gonna get hooked on anything like that. But again, the top and the hook in here was really what I liked about this particular hook. So this is my review on the prim hooks. Crochet, I will include a link below on how you can find these. You can get them at any of your um, local, probably online on your craft stores. Um, you might be able to find them on Amazon or some other third-party site. So again, this is Kimberly with Knit for Brains, my review of the Prim Crochet Hook.